The first hack is actually binding sketchbooks. If you're anything like me, I have a lot of sketchbooks for the same module or project and I would like to keep them organized. Cut off the binding, take a needle and thread, a very thick needle and a very strong thread, and I sewed it. It makes one big fat sketchbook that makes everyone drool all over you. Okay, that's disgusting, but you, you get the point. You'll be amazing. Drawing figures have always been very very challenging, but I found an easy way to draw them. You can use two techniques, rectangles and teeth. Now my sister, if she's watching, she'll be dancing all over the moon because she's a dentist and she always talks to me about the importance of teeth, like to brush and floss and all that nonsense. All you need to do is draw a rectangle or a tooth shape, add a head, some shading and you have yourself some groovy human figures. Adding them to interior sketches is also very easy and I have found myself using the tooth shape a lot and it's very easy to remember as well. You can also experiment with the sizes, the limbs and positions. I have been taught this technique by one of my teachers at uni and it will actually blow your mind. All you need to do is go around your room, your studio or anywhere you're in right now. Open some cupboards and find anything with a textured surface. So first I'm gonna use a small flower pot and then put it under my page to get this texture that I thought was suited for timber. I also then experimented with more textures, for example sand and paper and this weird grassy thing that I found in class that looks like it's dead. Then, what is great about this technique is then you can use all of the textures you found when you create a sketch. And then, different textures equals different materials. Now I know that turning an image to a sketch on Photoshop may not be groundbreaking for the most of you, but how can you use them? Now that is the clever part. First, a quick tutorial on turning an image to sketch. First, duplicate your layer and then invert the top layer by pressing Ctrl I for Windows. Then, turn the blending mode into color dodge and then apply Gaussian blur and then print it in black and white. Now the first tip on using this is actually printing it and then tracing it for your own sketching. Making them first as sketches makes it so much easier for you to actually see what you're tracing. Do you want to take it another step? Create a whole new layout for your precedence using this technique. Plan sketches elevations and then turn them all into sketch except the drawings and then lower their opacity, print them, draw over it a bit to make it, you know, look a bit sketchy and then color them with watercolors, markers and no one will ever know what you did. So maybe don't do this if you have enough time, just do this when you're in a rush. Did you notice that sometimes when you color, you can still see the color of the page? So you color in different directions to try and get the best pigmentation and it ends up being a cardio workout and your arms and muscles are aching? Well, underpainting is a technique done by many and many painters and artists, but for some reason I did not think to actually use it in my own sketches. Basically, all you need to do is to add a very light swatch of watercolor or markers on your drawing before you do anything else and then let it dry. After that, you can add your shading and more colors and you won't have to spend time coloring because you already have the middle color. All you need to do is add the highlights and add the shadows and you're done. That is all the hacks I have for today. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure you subscribe and share the video. It really helps me and the channel. I'm Rasha Shururu and I'll see you next time.